Hi, I'm Tim, welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we are discussing the most complex Rolex ever created. That's right, it is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Sky Dweller, reference 326933 in Rolex yellow gold and oyster steel you can see and you can purchase this steel and yellow gold dual time annual calendar on our website subscribe to our youtube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this rolex sky dweller now, the watch on my wrist bowed in 2012 and rather stunned observers. An immense amount of complexity from Rolex, a company traditionally averse to high complications. The watch is also very wearable. Despite its complexity, it's nowhere near the size of the comparably complex Yachtmaster II, and again, nowhere near the Brobdenagian proportions of the Deep Sea. This is a big, complex Rolex that wears smaller than you might expect. And you'll note, 42 millimeters across the round of the case, not including the crown. There are no crown guards. The watch actually has the aesthetic of an oversized day chest or day date, which is to say it has a fair bit of elegance about its case. That continues in the profile where the watch surprises with its lack of thickness. It's actually 13.9, so fairly slim when you take into account the sloped ring command bezel because it will help a dress cuff, yes, the sleeve beneath the jacket to slip up and over the edge of the watch. This is a surprisingly complex but surprisingly compact Rolex watch. When you view it in profile across the wrist, you'll note 50.7 millimeters lug to lug and the solid end links don't flare out dramatically. They're only about 52.2 millimeters across the wrist. When you add the solid gold solid end links, the watch increases its stance, but it doesn't venture into oversized territory. Now you'll note that the watch does feature a very solid composition and Rolex's pull tab lock on the clasp. It is not a clamshell mechanism. It is a pull tab release and the bracelet is handsomely executed. Yellow gold solid end links, yellow gold solid center links, satin finished steel on the flanking links, and polished outer shoulders. All individually sizable links removed using screws, no pins and sleeves here. Fully finished high polished clasp interior, and it does feature Rolex's easy link, five millimeter quick adjustment system. So you can take in or take out without tools the equivalent of one sizable link. You'll note the straight through, beautifully executed, no melding, no combination, perfectly straight, unerringly precise, combining two metals as dramatically dissimilar in color and composition as gold and steel, a testament to Rolex's industrial capability. Now you'll also note that the case surprises, that word again, it's more elegant than you might expect. If you were expecting some sort of squared off super case, you're gonna be perhaps left looking as there's a handsome and beautifully rounded profile to the case. It does have a compound curvature reminiscent of the Daytona, the Datejust, the Date 8. It looks nothing like the profile of the Sea Dwellers, the GMTs, or the Submariners. And that's a perfect match for the watch. Just think of it as a Datejust Plus, or a Date 8 Plus, or a Daytona Plus in terms of its case profile. Now moving on to the bezel, you can see that it's beautifully faceted, almost like the polished facets of a gem, and that's exactly how it catches and plays in the light. You'll also note, if you look carefully, that it is a mobile bezel, but designed to look stationary. It is part of the Caliber 9001, so it's a functional component of the movement. And you'll find, just as the crown, it's designed as a simple, interface that's essentially foolproof once you understand its basic rules of operation. Let's discuss them. Now the watch features a crown with no crown guards that is a screw down unit and the watch, despite having that massive circular through fitting, does have 100 meter water resistance. Now in the first position, once you screw the crown out, you can wind the watch and well, that's pretty much it. You can wind it. In the second position, nothing happens when the bezel is justified all the way clockwise. Now I can turn the bezel one click counterclockwise, pull the crown out, watch the date, You'll note that I'm jumping the radial indicator for the month. So the months correspond to the hours and there's a small aperture outboard of each hour index that represents the month. So we have 12 being the 12th month, so December. So January, February, March, April, May. So we're looking at May. Now I can bi-directionally adjust the date so that I can jump from May to June at six o'clock. And you'll note the little red indicator that fills the aperture 
to show you which month corresponds to the date and you can jump it bidirectionally in this first setting position with no hazard to the movement. But you'll note that the watch continues to tick. This is not the setting position. This is not the hacking position. Now you turn the crown one more click counterclockwise and now you have access to the local hour. You can use it to drive the date but you will note once again the movement is not hacked. It's still ticking. So I'm not altering the 24 hour second time zone. So that's what that is. There's an index that tells you what time it is. So you're looking at just past two o'clock in the afternoon, quarter past two. Now I turn the crown one more time and now everything moves in sync. Now you'll note I've hacked the seconds hand. The watch is stopped. I can set both of my time zones in sync and I can set precisely against a reference time to the second. Now you'll note as soon as I exit that setting mode the second hand resumes and I turn once, I turn again, and finally one last time till the ring command bezel is securely justified in the clockwise direction and I screw my crown back in. Now inside the case is Rolex's immensely complex 40 joule, nearly 400 component caliber 9001. It has a lot going for it. Let's talk about toughness. 100 meters water resistant thanks to the case. The movement features a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance. The two features helping to impart shock resistance. The watch features a overcoil Breguet style for its hairspring architecture and the hairspring is made of parachrome blue Rolex alloy. The two features respectively the overcoil helping to resist gravitationally induced timing deviations that is the effect of different positions and the parachrome blue alloy helping to resist magnetism. Automatic winding with a smooth bi-directional action thanks to Rolex's Teflon coated reversing wheels. The perpetual winding system as Rolex calls it gives the watch a 70 to 72 hour power reserve so roughly three days. This doesn't have to be your everyday watch to keep ticking away. And of course a COSC certified Swiss chronometer but Rolex recases the movement after the COSC tests and verifies that as a fully assembled watch and fully regulated the watch surpasses the timing standards of the COSC test. Now ultimately everything inside this watch and outside the watch, dial, case, bezel, bracelet is constructed entirely in-house by Rolex. This is an impressive feat of engineering, watchmaking and design. Again given that with less than 14 millimeters of case thickness all of that is packed within. You can see and you can purchase this compound complication surprisingly wearable, surprisingly elegant, perhaps the ultimate traveler's watch on our website. The Rolex Oyster Perpetual Sky Dweller by night for those red eye flights when you need Rolex's soft blue glowing chromolite luminescent material. An annual calendar requiring correction only once per year during the jump from February to March. You can see this Rolex annual calendar dual time travel specialty and buy it on our website.